I'm Shmuel Thaler, and I've been a staff photographer at the Santa Cruz Sentinel since 1987. So I remember waking up a little before two in the morning and seeing these flashes come from our windows and from our, uh, our bedroom we can see uh, the bay. We have a 180 degree bay of, uh, view of the bay. And my wife, Kathy, said, I heard there might be lightning. and I hadn't heard anything about it. So we go and look at the windows and we can see a tremendous number of lightning flashes. And that's when I remembered I was a photographer and said, let's go to Westcliff. And she was to so supportive and we loaded my tripod and some cameras into the car, go out to Westcliff uh, between Columbia and Delaware get there and there's a tremendous number of lightning strikes and very little thunder at the time and there were about in that stretch about 50 people socially distanced hanging out on Westcliff and watching this amazing amazing electrical storm and we were out there for about 25 minutes I think and saw hundreds of lightning strikes nothing like I had like nothing I'd ever seen before and then what happened was that the, um, there was what's called a roll cloud, which I've learned that that's what it's called since, which kind of is a cloud that rolls sideways and comes over. And there was no wind at all for, during the first 25 minutes, no rain, very little even thunder. We could hear some thunder. And I, I actually remember thinking, boy, I wonder if there could be some fires after this. And then within 25 seconds, this cloud, we, could, we watched it roll in and debris started swirling around and the wind picked up from zero to about 60 miles an hour in that, in that 25, 30 seconds. And we were scattering, everyone out there was scattering. And because I had to pick up the tripod and stuff, we were the last people out there. And then we were driving up Delaware on the way home and things were, had fallen in the street and there was debris all over the place. And, uh, and then we got home and we watched a little more, but it got really crazy. It got very windy and, and continued with uh, rain and we could hear the thunder then much more. And, um, and we thought, okay, that's it. That was a cool experience. And, and then it got, got a little crazy after that. Being the obsessive person I am, I got an, down to my computer and started editing the lightning photos at about 3.30 a.m. Um, and got them onto uh, social media within that night. And then, um, and then after that, got them on, onto the Sentinel the next day. Uh, of the images I got that night, I probably got maybe 20 or 30 successful lightning pictures. No, I actually, I think I probably got about 10 successful lightning pictures because you leave the shutter open for a long time and you want to make sure there's a number of lightning strikes in it and the lightning's really bright so it's, it's, it's a challenge to make sure the exposure is correct and the, most of the exposures are about two minute exposures. Um, and then it's just the, the picture that I think was the most successful uh, is one where you can see probably eight or ten lightning strikes hitting beyond Westcliff. So I'm standing on Westcliff, um, as I said, near Col the corner of Columbia, and uh, this is out looking towards Mitchell's Cove with a bunch of strikes coming down. And there, it's cropped a little. There's a little more in the, in the ocean with a few more strikes, but it just I just really want to concentrate on this uh, recognizable landmark of Mitchell's Cove in Santa Cruz. And you can see, get a sense of the roll cloud above just a little, and uh, you can also get, see the lightning reflected on, on the, uh, the ocean, Pacific Ocean, um, between uh, where I was and, and, uh, Wood and uh, Mitchell's Cove. A few weeks later, after the fires had really devastated parts of Bonnie Dune and Boulder Creek, a friend of mine, longtime Santa Cruz resident, Carol Fuller, called me and said she really would love to have a picture of that lightning storm, the picture that she had seen that I had taken, but she wanted to do something more with it. And so she talked to folks at the Community Foundation, and together they 
thought it would be a really great idea to give a print to donors to the Fire Relief Fund, a copy of this print, a signed, a signed print, as a thank you for, for their generosity in giving to the, to the fund. And uh, what well we've, Bay Photo generously donated 100 11 by 14 matte prints of the lightning, which will be a thank you gift to people who donate at a certain level to the uh, fire relief fund. The day after the lightning storm, we had heard about the uh, fire up in Pescadero and the Warnella fire, which was um, above Davenport. And so I drove up there and kind of went out and it was, it was fire in very remote places at that time. Um, there weren't any houses that were, that were um, being burned. They had crews out there, they had an air, aircraft out there. Um, I went out above Pescadero, drove on some really sandy uh, roads way out in the hills and uh, where the firefighters were fighting the fires. Um, and then the next night I had heard um, through, I think the police scanner, uh, that there was a fire up in Boulder Creek. And we kind of assumed that it was uh, from the lightning strikes. You know, the, the lightning strikes seemed to have started some fires that were kind of smoldering, and then, um, then they lit up. And so I decided to go up uh, to Boulder Creek to see what was going on and got a few details of where it might be. And I went up to, on Highway 236. And as I'm getting about halfway between Boulder Creek and Highway and, and Big Basin Redwood State Park, the sky is incredibly orange, a bright, bright orange. And there were emergency vehicles going back and forth. And of course, my job is to document this, but what I don't want to do is be in the way of the first responders. So uh, I started um, trying to figure out where the fire was and seeing if I could get to it. And I went up uh, China Grade Road and finally went to the end there where it starts hitting Big Basin and there was just flames all over the place. I didn't see any really tall walls of flame at that point, but the forest was just on fire. And at that point, um, the, the folks from CAL FIRE were, were just assessing what was going on and how big it was. And uh, it, was, it, was very, it felt very, very ominous, like nothing I'd seen before. And you know, we've had a number of wildfires here in Santa Cruz County over the years, the, the Summit Fire, the Trabing Fire, the Martin Fire, those were all in one year. We've had the Croy fire, we had the Lockheed fire, but nothing like this. This just felt really, really different. And from all uh, colleagues from all over the uh, California that I know, photographers who are shooting wildfires, uh, Noah Berger, Kent Porter, Justin Sullivan, Gabrielle Lurie, and talking to these folks, no one had really seen fires quite like this. They were much more erratic than any fires we had, we had uh, photographed before. So... Um, I got home, I processed that uh, work and knew that the next day I'd be going out uh, to photograph again. And the next day was where I started really seeing how severe the fire was, how erratic it was, uh, where houses were burning, uh, and crews were really stretched to their limit. And uh, there was definitely some challenges with how many firefighters we had here, there were challenges with um, no aircraft, mostly because of the smoky conditions uh, and also because of um, there were 600 other wildfires in the state of California. Um, and just watching the fire devour, devour home after home and up in the mountains, you know, there, the, if, if homes didn't have defensible space and they started to, to have some flames there, the firefighters would, would have to move on. They wouldn't even be able to save those homes that didn't have defensible space. So it was a, it was a really traumatic um, experience to be uh, photographing these, these horrific uh, fires.